Hi everyone, welcome back to another tutorial and another week of happy and easy painting. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to paint a wonderful kind of a dusk um, setting. It's kind of the sun going down behind um, the hill and it's, we're going to be painting a, a football pitch. And so it's very dark in the background, kind of a sunsetty sky um, and lights then shining down light on the football pitch and some little players on the football pitch, something along those lines. It's a, com it's a commission for uh, a person, so I thought, let's do a tutorial out of this. Grab your brushes, I hope you have fun, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Okay, here we go. I have a 16 by 20 canvas, okay? Canvas board, I primed it once, very lightly. Um, here are my colours. I have titanium white, Naples yellow, cadmium red. I'm not sure if I'm going to need cadmium red, um, but just in case. A little burnt umber, some burnt sienna. Again, I'm not too sure about, about burnt sienna, but we'll just put it on anyway. Um, Stalo blue, some crimson, alizarin, cadmium yellow pale, and some black. That's it. I have a little drop of turpentine with some linseed oil mixed into it, okay? Just a little drop, you can see it here, look, kind of a yellowy colour, very pale yellowy colour. Um, that's my thinners, okay? Now, I'm going to start with a quick sketch now, there's the photograph. Isn't that wonderful? And there's something about this type of a scene, it's just really, really eye-catching. Um, the glow of that light on the green, I think it's fantastic against the silhouette of those trees and the distant kind of hill cityscape. Um, this is the Glen football pitch in Cork City at night time. I'm, I'm not sure who took the photograph, but it was sent on to me to paint. Um, absolutely stunning photograph. Whoever did this is really gifted with the, with the camera. Now, I'm gonna draw a quick sketch. Um, I suppose I'll start with the line of the greenery, okay? Where the, where the pitch kind of meets the darkness. Now. It's not, the green almost fades into the blackness over here, doesn't it? Into the shadows. So I'm not sure where this line kind of ends. I can just make it out slightly, but it comes at a very slight angle up like that. And then it kind of turns and it comes back off to another angle again like this, you see? It's almost like we're looking into the corner of the pitch. Does that make sense? Um, I hope it does. Now, a couple of trees along here. I'm not too worried about those, okay? We can kind of change those as we need to. I'm just putting a hint of one or two of them. Now, we have the, the cityscape. This is looking up at the north side. So I live up at the very, very top of this um, hilly area up there, okay? I live way, way up at the very, very top of that um, city up there, okay? A suburb. So let's just put this in now. It comes up like that. It's all of a hill kind of effect and it evens out then slightly, look. It's just like that. Um, we have lots of little date lights at night time, street lights, and all that kind of thing. It's fantastic, isn't it? So that is that piece done. Um, we do have a couple of walls and things here at the front, but we don't have to worry about them right now, okay? So that's pretty much it. We are ready to paint. Now what I'm gonna do is, just to help my sky move around, with the paint move around nicely on my sky, I'm going to take a bit of tissue, all right? paper towel, tissue, a bit of cloth, anything at all. And I'm going to take a little tiny hint of linseed oil. Plain art quality linseed oil. I get this in my art store, okay? Um, it's not pure uh, linseed oil. It's a little bit refined, I would imagine. Now, take some of that on your tissue, look. I'm just going to rub some of that very, very lightly around some of the sky. Uh, the only reason for this is because I tend to kind of do this when I'm painting a large area. It just helps the paint move that bit better, especially for blending, etc. So it's just a good idea, I think, just to put a little bit of it just on a large area, if you're painting a large area. Um, a lot of people would say to me, 
Well, isn't that a bit like using liquid clear, like what Bob Ross would use? Um, it is, but it's different in the sense that the liquid clear, you see Bob Ross tutorials, you see the you see them putting on a coat of liquid clear. Um, that liquid clear stays wet on the canvas for a very, very long time. Whereas this linseed oil will almost immediately start soaking in and drying into the canvas. Now, what's the point in that, you ask? Well, what it does is, when it's drying in, okay, um, it's giving the canvas a very, very light layer of oil, um, the fibres of the canvas. So what's happening then is, when I paint onto this, even if it's dry, and I paint onto this, the turpentine and the oil in the oil paint mix, when it goes onto the sky then, it sort of unlocks that oil in the fibres, and it just smooth, it goes across the canvas beautifully smooth. It really does. You should try it, it's really wonderful. Um, okay, sky. I'm going to start with a very light blue, work it down then into a yellow, okay? Again, avoiding greens. Now, I don't know if you can see um, on the sky there in the reference photograph, but if you try to just imagine those clouds are not there, what we have is just a plain blue sky up on top, and then you can see a layer of a kind of a mauve pink going across between the yellow and the blue. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but it's there. It's a very soft, pale, kind of a pinky mauve going across. That's why there's no green then in the sky. Okay? Now I'm taking my large stubby brush. Okay, I have a new one. I'm going to try and wear this down, um, bulk it up a little bit. So, let me start with some blue. Phthalo blue. Okay. Some white. And I'm putting a little tiny drop of thinners into this as well, just a hint with the corner of my brush, okay? When I dip into turpentine, um, I only pick up a little tiny amount with the corner of my brush at a time, okay? It's just, I add little bits at a time when I'm painting. Because if you add too much, it just becomes like a watercolour. Now, what I want is a nice, thin, creamy consistency, okay? That's not bad. A little more turpentine, just a little. And uh, maybe a hint more of the white. And I may even put a hint of crimson because this is a very warm blue. It's a very, um, what I would say is a kind of a, almost like a French ultramarine kind of a blue. Let me just try this now. See how much that's, see how well that's going across the canvas now. It's fantastic, isn't it? I'm going to darken it slightly. And I'm going to add more crimson. So that layer of linseed oil now, it's not completely dried in, but it just gives the canvas um, a kind of a very light, oily sort of feel to it. And the paint moves around beautifully. I do this only really when I'm painting a very, very large area. Um, I won't use it for the rest of the painting, it's just for this very large area. I want to kind of, uh, I want to keep the paint nice and soft and smooth all the way across. So I don't want um, patches kind of drying in as I go along which can happen sometimes if you're putting on very thin layers you'll find some um, patchiness on your canvas that's because it's very thin layers I like to work in thin layers anyway now more blue more white a little hint of pink okay and let's go over here I'm just kind of dragging the paint around now on my canvas. Getting the paint to go where I want it to go. Okay. Now as it comes out, I'm going to start adding more pink into this. Let's take more white. Um, a bit more crimson. I did put cadmium red on my palette as well, just in case. Um, it's tricky to know. Some of the clothes do have a bit of a nice cadmium red type of a hue going through them in places. So rather than looking for my tube of paint later, I thought, well, I'll just put a little bit on the palette, just so that it's there if you need it. Going across again. So 
or bringing it all on down. And it's kind of difficult, I suppose, at the beginning when they're using these stubby brushes at the very beginning when they're just new because the hairs are very soft and it's very thin. Um, when they start bulking up after even, even after two paintings, uh, this brush now will start kind of filling, filling up in the ferrule, it'll start thickening up and then you can really put on lots of paint with it. But for now, um, it's tricky to get the proper amount of paint on the canvas, you see. It's just because the, the, the hair is so smooth and so soft, the paint is just kind of um, flowing off the brush very, very quickly. And just soften all that up into that blue there, okay? Now, I'm going to start putting a very light layer of pink. So I'm just dipping this in my turpentine and rubbing it on my tissue once or twice just to get most of the paint off. And I'm going to take some crimson with white. Okay. Try and drop a turpentine because when you dip into your white, immediately it thickens up the paint. It makes it very pasty and chalky. So a tiny hint of turpentine then just to kind of soften it a little bit. And I'm just going to go along the bottom of that. And I want this to be nice and light. Well, I picked up some white off my palette. So I'm just give that a wipe with the tissue. You can use that, look. And push that in. My palette's a little bit close here, isn't it? But what, hair? And just soften that across. Okay, so we're getting lighter and lighter as we come down. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give this brush a good clean. Just dip it in and give it a really good clean on your tissue, all right? Um, I may even use a different brush. That may be a good idea as well because we do have a bit of blue deep inside this brush. And if I start mixing yellows, I may end up with a kind of a greeny color. So I don't want that. Now, I'll take another slightly smaller brush, okay? And I'm gonna take some. I can see a hint of cadmium yellow in this. And I'm gonna take a hint of crimson. Now that looks a bit rich for now, but don't worry, we lighten this with some white. Uh, I'm not going to go pure yellow with this. There's a hint, I'm going to put a hint of a warm sort of a hue going through this. So that's why I put in the hint of red there. Now let me just have a look at this. I'm just going to soften that across there just for now, okay? Just very quickly. Then I'm going to start taking more yellow, more white. And I'm going to put this very bright colour into that. Little touch more yellow, perhaps. So I'm being very, very careful now with that blue. I don't want to touch that blue. I'm going to take a hint of crimson, some white. Oh, lots of white in this, okay? And I'm going to put this band of very light pink right across between the two of those, okay? Now soften it down into your yellow first. All right, like so. Soften those together. Clean the brush. It's very important that you clean your brush between these mixes because you don't want to contaminate that blue with some yellow that's on your brush. Mix a little bit more pink now. It's a very, very whitey color, isn't it? Looking at the photograph, it's very whitey. Very whitey pink, up there, soften it across. And this is a very dry layer of paint now that I have on my canvas. It's very dry, very thin layer. I don't like using very, very thick layers of paint on skies like this because it gets very messy very quickly. Now, Let's go with some white. I'm going to just drag a bit of white through here like that. I want to just really soften gradually across from one colour to the next. Okay. I'm going to go over here and soften those colours together again. And go up and down then and soften everything together nice and gently. Okay. So what we're getting there now, aren't we? We almost have the base of this sky in um, and finished now a bit more white 
I'm going to lighten that again a little bit across there with that very bright pink. I want the lighter colour to come up that little bit more from the bottom. Alright, and then we have a very rich yellow just at the very end, don't we? I'm going to take a hint of cadmium red this time with some cadmium yellow. And I'm going to put that very rich, just a subtle hint of it, along behind the hill. Now that's probably even enough. Let's clean our brush. And let's start putting in some cloud. Now, I could probably use the same brush for the clouds, okay? Just let me get some white on my palette first. And let's paint some nice clouds. So I'm going to start now with a very rich dark blue for the cloud. And I'm just looking now to make sure that my blue up here is enough. Yes, I think I need to darken the blue just on top. Just a little. Let's try some phthalo blue with some cadmium red for a change. And let's darken this blue. Well, I think it's a little bit on the dull side for me. I'll try sailor blue just on its own, okay? Drag that across there, soften it in. I do just want to darken it very gently. Just ever so slightly. And let's get a bit more. And let's just drag that across and bring it down nice soften it back into the sky okay that's a bit better i feel now a dark that dark blue sky color okay or the cloud color rather i'm going to go with some phthalo blue and a hint of crimson now just painting this no thinners okay i want this nice and thick and a little more hint of thinner or a crimson so phthalo blue with some crimson uh, let's try this. I'm just kind of flicking it around generally in little circles, okay? Now it's a very rich blue. I can see there's a lot of pink in the colour. And I'm going to just kind of try and copy this somewhat, get it looking somewhat similar to the photograph so lots of thick paint on this um, okay it goes up like that and it sort of disappears out of the painting up above doesn't it okay we go now try not to get this too perfect it doesn't have to be exactly the same it's only just a representation of the photograph okay you don't have to be absolutely perfect with every single little piece of cloud in this okay you can kind of just make it your own as well how to flicks out here and there over here doesn't it okay and go up here and let's let this sort of disappear up into the sky all right now a little bit more on the brush. I have a dab of some little clouds here and there. Kind of popping off. I'm just dabbing my brush. That's basically all I'm doing now. Right? Just dabbing it. Little dab dab here and there. And then let's take some nice rich. What I'm going to do then is... Um, I'm going to start, as it comes across, I'm going to start adding more pink, some more crimson into the mix. Okay, so because it's kind of catching the heat of the sun and it's probably getting a little bit warmer. All right. I'm just going nice and gently now. I'm taking my time. Now, all I'm going to do is up here. Just give the brush a quick rub on tissue, just take off most of the blue there. Well, not most of it, but just make it nice and dry. I'm going to take some cadmium red, a little hint of that blue. I'm going to start adding little hints of cadmium red 
Int cloud, okay, just up here. I can see there's a lovely hint of warm color popping out here and there from the cloud higher up and pop it hint in through there. A little bit around there. Now we have some nice rich warm ones at the bottom as well, don't we? So let's make some nice rich dark ones for the bottom. And the bottom ones are going to have a lot more red in them because they're very far down on the sunset. So the sun will really be hitting these and making them very warm. So basically, let's just go across like that. Okay. And vary the line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight all the time, all the way across. Take a bit more cadmium red into that. And we have another one that kind of comes down like that, doesn't it? And the thing about clouds off in the distance is, as you probably know, uh, the further down, down the horizon line you come with your clouds, the thinner they're going to be. So the further away they are, the thinner look, they're going to be just tiny little lines way off in the distance. Because they're so far away, okay? Well, let's take more red in this. I want almost just a red kind of colour off in the distance. Uh, we have that one there, and then there's another one next to it here. The next one then gets a bit more blue again, because it's, com it's coming away from the heat source of the sky, so it's getting cooler and cooler again as it comes out. And then we go back out into just a sort of a blue, okay? And again, a nice kind of a straight line along the bottom. Give it a little wiggle as you come across. Yeah? And do that as well. Now, we're going quite well, aren't we? I'm going to darken some of this up here. I need to get more phthalo blue on my palette. So I'm going to darken just the centre of that sky to create a very nice kind of an impact up there. So let's take phthalo blue some of that red and maybe a hint of black as well also all right i'm going to go really dark with this so it's nice and dark along here isn't it look go there pop a bit through here creating some shadows in the cloud now that's even probably enough you don't have to go crazy with all of this pop a little bit through there um okay a little bit up there and i may put another one actually here look i'm going to put another one through here just to break up this little empty area and perhaps pop one or two kind of floating downwards like that and I think I leave it at that. I just want to keep it simple. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take my blender brush. Now a makeup brush, powder brush, whatever you want to call it. This has gone a bit green because I was blending some grass with this, but it's fairly dry, I think. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's soften. I think I'll start now with the bottom ones. I'm going to soften those very slightly across. I just want to take the edge from them, okay? Nice and soft and gentle. Into your blue, pull that across nice and gently as well. Okay, then let's come up into this one. And let's soften some of these into the sky. I'm hardly touching the canvas when I'm doing this, okay? I'm just letting the brush glide very gently across over these clouds. I'm going to let this soften back away into the sky as it comes up. Okay. Very gentle. Look at that. Nice and soft. And it just gives you that wonderful hazy sort of a feel in the clouds. Now, I may even just leave it at that. I think that's nice. It's simple. Yeah. Okay. Let's call that done, finished. How are we doing for time? We have 69 minutes left on the camera, we're doing grand. 
Um, right, this dark off in the distance, let's put this in and get all the little lights and stuff like that done, yes? I'm simply going to make this um, black burnt umber and some cadmium red. I want this to be, and now it does a bit of thinners in this as well, look, it's thin, it's not very thick. Let's just paint it in very thin like that. Nice watery thin paint. Uh, let's go over here. You can see there's a bit of red in the mix, but I'm going to darken all of this anyway. Okay, you can just go for some burnt umber on its own. Let's take some burnt umber with black. Okay, there we go. A bit more of a hill in this one here. All right. Now it probably just looks like pure black to you sitting at home, but it's a dark brown. I'm going to start adding. Now it's very dark over on this side, so let me just take some black, even hint of phthalo blue as well. And I want to darken this side way down, right down to the field. Okay. Now we can come continue across here and do these trees and stuff as well. We might as well as we're here. Take some burnt umber, some black, and a hint of red. And we have a tree up here. Just put that tree in like this, okay? And then it comes down. And we'll then bring some black, let's take some crimson, right across here into this very, very dark area here, okay? Very dark. And I'm going to suggest some trees down at the tip of my brush. A couple of little trees. You see, it's only an impression of the scene. The trees are not going to be exactly the same every single time, okay? Um, you know, they grow bigger, they grow smaller, they, you could stand in a different angle with the camera and they look completely different. So all, all you need is, is a suggestion of these trees, that's all. Okay, just like that. Nice and simple. Um, right, <clears throat> the next thing I want to do is get all these little lights and stuff in. Now, I may zoom in slightly for this, okay? Bear with me. Or should I leave it as it is? Um, it's only like a suggestion of a cityscape, basically. So what you could do is, let's take a little flat brush, yeah? And let's take some cadmium yellow and a hint of red, cadmium red. And with that orangey, yellowy orange color, let's pop in some suggestion of buildings, lights, roadways, that kind of thing, okay? It's just very loose, very loose brushwork. Some Naples yellow. There could be a row of houses off in the distance off here as well. Now, I know the area. We're kind of looking out over the city, all right? So it's just going to be basically lots of um, colours. Look, little dabs here and there. Suggestions of little street lights, that kind of thing. Now, some cadmium yellow, cadmium red. <coughs> Go for a nice orangey colour. And I know there's a roadway coming down like this. It's called Cathedral Road, I think that's the one. And it kind of comes down like this, right down through into the city, okay? So I'm going to suggest some of that. Coming down like that. You see, all I did was dab with the corner of my brush, that's all. And that's a nice colour, so we could pop some more of that colour in here and there. Um suggest a couple of things like lights, buildings, rooftops, that kind of thing. Then we switch to a small pointy brush and I'm going to take some dark colour. I know there's a church up there, it's called Grana Braher Church, it's a way up there. Um, I'm just going to put a hint of something there to suggest that there's some kind of a building going on up there. And I'm going to rough up the top edge as well. Look with my pointy brush, just 
to show that there are lots of things going on. You see, it's nothing in particular, it's just there's a tower up there called Telecom Aaron. Okay, there's a telecom tower way up there. It doesn't show up on the photograph because the photograph is really, um, it's just very dark up there, you know. Now, small brush, let's take some cadmium yellow, a hint of cadmium red. And let's just suggest some street lights, little dots here and there. Okay, that's all. Very simple, little dots. You see, already now it's starting to look like a cityscape, the lights of a cityscape. And this is how I would paint. Um, that might be a good tutorial, actually. Um, let me know what you think. Painting a cityscape and creating the impression of all the city lights, but doing it in a way which is easy to follow and easy to paint. Okay, look, a couple of lines here and there. Pop a few in. So when you're looking at this, then now, now you see it's, you can't see anything in particular. You cannot see buildings, you cannot see actual streets, but it's just an impression. It's giving off the impression of lots of lights um, in the distance. Street lights, lamps, that kind of thing, okay? It's just giving you that impression, that feeling. Let's put a couple of horizontal lines to suggest anything at all. Put a couple of nice rich yellow colours here and there. Now you don't have to overdo this. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. I think this is probably even enough. Okay, now, done. So you can see now how simple that was. Yes, it does look like lights and stuff off in the distance overlooking the city. You see what I mean? So I hope now that's kind of made a little bit of sense to you. Let's move down and do this lovely green here. And this is where the magic happens. This is where you really see everything coming to life. I'm going to switch over to a slightly larger brush. Um, this one already had green in it from the previous painting. So I'm, I was keeping this to do this green. All right, that's all. Let's dampen this slightly. We're going to go with uh, for this, I'm going to start off with black and cadmium yellow. That will give me a nice earthy green, okay? And a lot, I, I hear a lot of people commenting saying, you know, I never knew black and green, or uh, black and yellow made a green, and they tried it and they couldn't believe it. Um, black and yellow make a fantastic green, a fantastic landscape green, because the black paint is made with lots of blue pigments, okay? So that's why when you mix the yellow with that, it turns a lovely green. Now I'm going to add phthalo blue to this because it's quite cool off to the sides, if you know what I mean. The green gets very sort of warm in the centre and bright and then cool on the other sides. It's that coolness that catches your eye in this painting. And look, I'm even going to soften it up into that dark. It's not a solid line, look. Soften it in so that it adds an air of mystery so you can't see where the pitch actually finishes. Come down with that nice dark blue colour. Let's mix a bit more. Let's take a bit more yellow into this and let's make it nice and rich as it comes across into the centre of the painting. And I love painting scenes like this because they're simple, yet they're so eye-catching when you see the glow of the field in a moment. They really are so eye-catching. And, um, you know, it's simple but very effective. And as a tutorial, it's fantastic. Now, some more yellow, little hint of phthalo blue. Let's bring that nice cool green across here, soften it very gently, 
I think the trick with a lot of this is to soften the edges together very gently, okay? Um, if you have very, very strong lines between each section, I just don't think it's going to look right. Now, let me mix up plenty more of this paint. Some phthalo blue, some cadmium yellow, and a hint of turpentine. Soften this. I'm just focusing you know, on getting the canvas covered really. That's my goal at this moment. Just to cover all this canvas and then we start working in some of the darks. Now, we have a lot of darks in this on either side, don't we? So I'm just going to get some more cadmium yellow. Let's take a bit more there. Um, I think I may have enough cadmium or uh, enough phthalo blue. Let's take some phthalo blue, cadmium yellow, lots of thick paint on this, okay? And some black. And that's for a long hair. The bottom is very dark. See it? It's a very, very dark colour going through the bottom of the grass. So bring that up. Now also, you don't have to soften this together completely. You can separate the colours just ever so slightly as well. You can even see that in the photograph, in the reference photo. Um, you can sort of see patches of light hitting here and there. So you don't have to darken this and make it kind of very soft. I'm just going to create, see, some of the dark shadows scooting across the green. Okay, now let's just sit back and take a look at this. Okay, I'm happy enough with that. I'll go with some nice dark again on the opposite side. And over here I'm going to bring a little bit of dark. It's almost like a shadow of a building or something coming across. Out into the pitch. And then I'm going to take some black. And I'm going to put some nice dark colour just along over in this corner here. Okay, let's sit back again, take another look. Now, that looks very dark on camera. I can see it does. But don't worry. I'm now going to start lightening it and adding those bright colours. So, give the brush a quick clean on some tissue like that. Let's go into some cadmium yellow. Let's take a hint of white and a hint of phthalo blue. I'm going to start off with this light pastel kind of brighty green colour first. Okay. Now, take some yellow into that, start brightening the centre of this pitch. Take a bit of white into that yellow as well. Soften that down. Okay, we're getting there. So I'll slowly lighten this down as we go. Just bit by bit, okay? Don't try and get it all at the same time, at the very beginning. Take some white and some yellow. And let's go up here and just put that very bright piece in, and soften it across. Clean our brush again. Do the same. Some white, some yellow. We can put more white now into this as we're going along, all right? So how's that coming along? Isn't that lovely? I may take a smaller brush. Okay, clean flat brush. I'm going to take some yellow, a hint of phthalo blue and lots of white and I'm going to go along and just the smaller brush gives you a little bit more control doesn't it I find um, okay let's come over here
Clean the brush again, just keep cleaning your brush to keep it nice and clean. Hint of the blue. A little bit of a light down in this corner coming through. Just soften very gently now some of those lines. Okay. Right. Soft blender brush. I'm going to soften some of these out. I'm going to mix now a very rich mix. A tiny bit of thaler blue with some cadmium yellow. I'm just going to put that very rich kind of a colour. Pop that in there. A mouth of yellow, so that doesn't matter. Now. Okay. And I'm thinking maybe a hint of white. And just to really brighten that. I just really want to brighten it up a good bit. Just around the centre, okay? There we are. Now, I think that's enough. That is finished. Next we have a very dark kind of a shed area over here. Let's take some blue and some black and just put a suggestion of this kind of shed area. And there's lots of little bits and bobs going on over here as well. Let's take some white and some of the blue and I can see a hint of some outlines here and there. It's all just a little suggestion, all right? You see, they're kind of in the shadows, just so you can't really see them, they're in the shadows, but a little hint is good, I think, of just here and there. Um, it just kind of tells you that there's stuff over there and there's things going on. Take a bit of black, a bit of black along here. Also, there, you can see kind of in the photograph as well, there are lots of these kind of power lines going across. I'm going to leave those out because I think they might spoil the painting. Okay, we have a couple of poles coming up here and there for the lights. Yeah, put a suggestion of some of those in. Um, let's go over to the other side. I'm just using plain black now for this, okay? Couple of poles over here. Again, they're off in the distance. You can't see them. And we have a couple of, we have one big one then here, don't we? very thick one over there now it's probably a bit thicker than the photograph but i want to really show this light it's a big light and it's shining down on shining down on the pitch creating this light you see and then i put another one or two like so Um, yeah, you see, it's just all these little bits and bobs. It really does help. Now let's get some little light, touches of light here and there. I'm going to go with a light blue, maybe a hint of green. And I'm going to put a hint of just one or two small details here and there. Some light on the poles. Just to separate them from the background, okay? That's all, just a hint here and there. And we can suggest some light points along the edge of the pitch. 
uh, it's dark so it's very difficult to see what's actually happening okay along these edges over here it's just as I, as I keep saying a suggestion to your mind to say that there's lots of stuff happening there's stuff going on now I want to put in um, some spots of bright light on some of these I'm going to put in one here okay like that um, maybe even a hint of yellow might not be such a bad idea let's try even Naples yellow to create the intense light from that and we have a little bit on that little bit on this one understand so they're casting the lights down on that pitch okay nice and simple let's go on and do some people just put a little hint of shadow over here on this side now let's zoom in and do some people playing on the football pitch yes just a hint there we go now all this basically is just take some dark colors let's try some brown okay put a hint of brown suggest a player there let's suggest another one next to him okay little dabs with the brush that's all it is little tiny dabs and you can put a head on some of them look couple of little dots here and there it's very kind of loose it's um yeah it's very it's a very loose style of painting you know one here one here little carrots okay you see two little people there a hint of a shadow coming off of them let's drag it across look and we'll do the same as some of these some of these guys have a very strong shadow Oh, it kind of swoops right across the pitch okay like so and you can see that you know it I'm not actually painting actual people but your mind is telling you that yes there's people out there figures of people standing on the pitch okay nice and simple let's put in some lighter colors because they will have some lighter colors some of them you can see some lighter spots here and there some of them will have a hint of white let's put a hint of red every now and again look just dab of red just to kind of catch your eye you see it's great fun it really is great great fun doing this seeing how they sort of the scene just kind of comes to life, doesn't it? Okay, the shadow coming off of this guy here. Couple of small shadows. You could have a shadow off some of the lights, possibly coming across the grass like that. Okay. All right. 
Um, let's bring this one down. The shadows do kind of bring a painting to life, I find. You know, once the shadows go in, it just kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Now, well, a couple of dots of white, just for some footballs, okay? Because they are training after all. And push one or two off in the distance here in the shadows. So there we go. Like a nice simple scene. Don't have to go too into too much detail for it. At all, just a little tiny bit of detail here and there makes a big difference. Now I will kind of tip away at this adding little sort of little highlights here and there. And look, I can just sharpen some of the buildings off in the distance here. Just give them a little bit more uh, form. And let's put a little bit of hint of green in here and there. Now we have a wall coming across here, don't we? And it's just a plain black shadow of a wall. Let's put one here. Okay. That's one. We have a higher one here. And this will be a lovely silhouette now against the back, against the, the greenery of the the football pitch. It'll be a lovely contrast. Now it comes down at a slight angle like this, doesn't it? Slight angle across. So you can kind of see now how I made all of this nice and simple. Um, I know when you're looking at something like this, you think, oh, that's very complicated. There's lots of details, lots of little people. Um, but it's, it's not really. You don't have to be too complicated with it, okay? Just enjoy yourself, have a bit of fun. And this one comes across like that. Right, I'm gonna put in the suggestion of a lighter side, just here. Just a little hint, and uh, we have a little lighter side over here. It's just this kind of a shadowed area where the light is sort of slightly catching it. And we have little caps on these. The light is just hitting on some points. Um, a little bit of light across the top of the wall. It's that strange kind of a shadowy mauve sort of um, a light, you know, the way the light kind of catches sometimes like that. Uh, it looks like a dark blue almost. It, it's that kind of a light. Okay, now put a little bit of shadow underneath some of those. Middle there. And we have some little bars coming across as well. Now this needs to be a bit higher here. Okay. And let's put some of these bears across. We have one here. And lean down hard, nice and hard on your brush. That will help you um, get a nice straight line, okay? Let me just put the camera down a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing, okay? There we go, that's better. And we have one or two here. Okay. 
Okay. And we have one or two here. All right. Now you can put a bit of highlight on some of those if you like. Don't have to, but I think I'll put just a hint of a light color. Just here and there, look. It's just a suggestion, that's all. And we get some of that light blue on top of this one here. Okay, and I want to put one or two birds going across the sky. There we go. Nice and simple. So my friends, that's a nice simple tutorial on creating a nighttime. It's kind of, I suppose, it's a cross between a nighttime scene and a sunset, isn't it? Um, it's just a nice simple scene. Now I'm going to just soften some of those whites in just gently. Just give them a little tap here and there. And I'll just go around then and just, um, you know, add some little details here and there. I'll just refine some of the lines. Now one thing we do have is and I forgot to tell you this before. A little bit of a goalpost, don't we? And what have I got? We have, I've nine minutes left on my camera. That's not too bad. Let's take some white, some yellow, and some Naples yellow. And we have this bright goalpost here. So it comes right down. I'll come in a bit now with this, so you can actually see it when the frame is on. Okay. And then piece going across like that. And then we have a piece going over, then it turns down. Okay. And that's our goal post. It's just a quick suggestion, that's all. Okay, very quick suggestion. Um, it's dark on the top, so let's put it dark here, and it comes down and goes into bright, so you can see it, you understand? And my friends, that is about the size of it. Now let me zoom in and show you what we have managed to create in this tutorial. Isn't that wonderful? A nice strong sky look against that lovely dark background. And isn't that wonderful? You can almost pick out little street lights and stuff like that off in the distance. You see how, how simple that was, just a couple of dabs of the brush. Here and there, nothing too complicated. And the pitch, football pitch, people just standing around playing football. And you can see it's just little touches of colour, that's all, with the point of the brush. Okay, nice and simple. Just keep it nice and simple. And there we are. So let me turn the camera here now so you can see myself. There we go. 
that was so much fun. Thank you so much for watching. I really enjoyed that. I'll stick a frame on that now and I'll use it in the end of this video. You'll see it with the frame on it. It's going to look fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you're painting away. Um, I can see some of you are absolutely getting um, so good with your paintings. It's stunning. Some of your works. Um, I've known a lot of you now since we kind of first started with this YouTube channel and I've kind of seen you all at the very, very beginning and it's just amazing the how much you've progressed and how good you're getting with the painting. Um, some of you are even better than myself. I'm jealous. I need to learn your secrets. Um, you're fantastic. Some of your artworks are fantastic. So congratulations. Um, keep watching. Do subscribe. Um, I have a Patreon channel. If you want to go and support me there, you will see lots of more wonderful tutorials on that as well. It's a one little community. So um, have fun. Thank you very much. God bless and I will see you next week.